Welcome to the Hitting the Wall Challenge. In this challenge, we will make the cat walk across the screen, hit a wall, which is this black thing here, say ouch, and fall down, like this. All right, doesn't look too bad, but here's the real power of it. You'll notice if I move this wall a lot closer, it will still work. So no matter where the wall and cat are in relationship to each other, in the middle, the bottom, close, far, it still works. And that's really important when you start developing your own games later on. All right, that's your challenge. Feel like you have the skills to do it? Jump in, start doing it. Can always come back for some hints. But I'm going to give you some hints now. I'm going to start a new project again. File, new. The first thing I want to do is create the wall. How do I do that? Well, I make a new sprite. You've only worked with one sprite so far, which is the cat sprite, but you can have a lot of sprites here. You could have 100 sprites. And in complicated games, you do. And I'm going to click on the paint and paint my own sprite. I'm going to click on this rectangle too. All right, now purple wall seems nice. Okay, I'm done. How do I get back to the code now? Click on the code tab, and I'll get to the code. Now, let me click on move 10 steps, see if that works. Uh-oh, that moved the wall. This is something really important, and people make mistakes up. You notice the wall is highlighted? So all my code and directions are going to the wall, not the cat. Now, if this was a game and I wanted to make a spinning wall that the cat is dodging, that'd be great. I'd probably give the wall some code. In this case, it's going to be a stationary wall. So I'm going to delete this, move the wall to where I want, and click back on the cat. Make sure I'm coding the cat. So I'm going to move the wall here. Let's make this cat just move across the screen. And instead of using glide, I'm going to use the move 10 steps block. And I'm going to do it over and over again. Oh, no. I did it to the wall again. That time it wasn't purposeful, so always make sure you're on the right one. <laughs> okay, move, click it again. And I want to do that over and over again. What block does that? It's a really cool one called forever. And I'm going to click, say when the green flag is clicked, cleans it up. So I click the green flag, there it went right through the wall. You notice if I drag it back, it keeps on going. And that's because the yellow is around it. It means it's still running. Great. That's nice. All right. Now I want to detect if it's touching the wall because I don't know where this wall will be. It could be far. It could be close. So I can't say like move 10 steps for like 30 times and then do it because what if the wall is closer? So you're going to use this if block. This if block is really powerful. What it says is, if something, then do something in here. Otherwise, skip over it. This is the power behind coding, this simple block. Any game, any interactive thing, if is super important. You'll notice there's a space here. And if I go to sensing, there's some blocks I can put in there. I can say if touching mouse pointer. If I'm going to this arrow, click on this and say sprite 2. Why did I say sprite 2? That's the wall. So if touching Sprite 2, I want to go, I'm going to go to Looks and say, Ouch. Let's run this. Nothing happened. Well, that's because this block was never run. It's not connected. All right. Well, when do I want to check if it's touching Sprite 2 or the wall? After every 10 steps. So it's going to move 10 steps. Say, am I touching the wall? Am I touching the wall? So I'm going to move this inside the forever. And it's really important that it's inside of forever if, if you want to check it over and over again. So what this does is it say, am I touching the wall? No. Nope. All right, skip over that. Go back to the top of the forever. Move 10 steps. Am I touching wall? 
No, I'm not touching wall. Skip over the out. I reach the bottom, that means go back to the top, move 10 steps. And it does that over and over again until it gets here and it says, am I touching the wall? Yeah, say out. Let's run it. Okay, said out, great. Uh-oh. Said out for two seconds and it kept on moving. Why? Well, after it says out, it keeps on going. It says, oh, I gotta repeat this forever. So it's moving 10 steps. Oh, I'm still touching the wall. I gotta say ouch again. Over and over again. So you can put multiple things inside this if. I'm gonna say ouch and I'm gonna stop, stop everything. Go to stop all. And that's important that it's inside the if. So that if it's touching sprite, it says ouch and then stops all. Let's test it out. Perfect. It stopped. It's not moving. Now, I didn't add the sound, which you can in the sound tab. You can make a recording and then make it play it. I didn't make it fall over. I'll leave that up to you. There is another way to do this, but I really wanted to show you it using the if block. If you feel like you got this, jump in. If you want to see another sort of cleaner way using something a repeat and tilt block, stay on and I can show you that. All right, the other way I could have done this is a repeat and tilt. I'm going to disconnect this and disconnect. And so I want to repeat, move steps, to, oops, it's 10 steps until I hit the wall. What is hit the wall? Touching sprite two. So what this will do is move until it hits the wall. Then how, where do I put the ouch? There's no space. Unlike the forever, which has no connector at the end, because you'll never get there because it goes stays on forever there. That's why you need to stop all. This has a connector at the end, because what this will do is say, move 10 steps, move 10 steps, move 10 steps, move 10 steps. Am I touching wall? No, nope. keep on moving 10 steps. Am I touching wall? Move 10 steps. And then when it's done, it says, all right, I'll do the next step and my connector down here. So that's where I could say, say it. And I'm going to run this code so you see it. You can see that's highlighted in yellow, so it's running. So that's another way. But I really wanted to show you the if because the if is super powerful and really important. A repeat until is kind of like an if, but a sort of different structure, and it allows it to look a little cleaner and use a few less blocks. All right. Good luck and happy scratching.